Psalm 122, 1. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. This is where we all need to be every day, right? Amen. Could you just imagine getting that phone call and saying, Hey, let's go into the house of the Lord today. Amen. I mean, is there something inside of you that says, This is where I really want to be. This is exactly where God wants us to be. And this is where I like to be. And I hope that you like to be there too. And if you go to a church to where it's just horrible to go to that church, then chances are you need to find another one, right? But you need to go into the house of the Lord to sing His praises. I mean, I enjoyed the music, even though for a few uh, songs that we were singing, I didn't quite have a book, so a few of those words I didn't quite get. But I was watching the singers, and I was trying to emulate those, right? And, uh, but it was great, though, that the kids were singing to the top of their lungs. Do, do your grandkids, do they really know these songs? But they were singing them, weren't they? How did they? I mean, how did these kids, they, they were singing loud, and over here they were singing loud. How does that happen? That's a miracle, right? Amen. They're speaking in psalms. I mean, they're just able to just, just get in there. So one of them was singing. I, I don't know what words they were singing, but they were just singing real loud, right? <laughs> I loved it. And I heard Grayson, my Grayson singing, Hallelujah, find the glory. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, find the glory. I mean, it's like a, he's looking for the glory. <laughs> uh, I mean, isn't that great? He doesn't have to go very far because his dad brings him to church. So he found it. But I mean, look at the verse. It's a, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go in the house of the Lord. If you're truly hungry for more of God, it's not how much that you feel like you have. Do you have enough of God to get you into heaven? Well, I hope so. But if you have enough of God in you to get you into heaven, He's going to make you want more of it. Yeah. I mean, you want more. You want more. My, my children, they want to go to their grandparents this coming week. They want to so bad. I don't know why. They were my parents and it wasn't great. <laughs> they, didn't do, they didn't do a great job. Well, anyway. They didn't do a great job with me, amen? No, no. But the idea was, I'm like, why would you want to go there? I couldn't wait to get out of there. And here are these grandkids. They can't wait to get there. Because, see, in their hearts, they love those grandparents. They love them. And it's not just from the lavish gifts that they give them. Although my parents give my, grand, my kids more gifts than they ever gave me. <laughs> totally true. But it's not just the fact that they can't wait to get those gifts. Because they just, in their heart, they're drawn to God. In their, or, I'm sorry, in their heart, they're drawn to the grandparents. Well, see, us, we need to, in our hearts, be drawn to God. To, if you think of the verse and how it looks, I mean, I was glad when they told me that church was open. I was glad. That's how revivals get started, amen? Revivals get started when people, they want more of Jesus. They want more. They want more. And this verse is so beautiful. It says, again, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Let's look at just a few verses at Psalm 84. And I want us to hopefully let this be a foundation for where we're going this morning. Again, Psalm 84. It is interesting that last week we were praying for a miracle. And the miracle was that the house of God would be full today. Amen. What are our expectations? Let me tell you what our expectations are. I believe that uh, Shirley was preparing the communion this morning. And she says, how many should we fill? And I think I said all of them. I said, I said fill all of them. I said, 80. I said, how many chairs we got? And so we counted right here. We've got more. We can add more. So don't think that we're... But uh, she said, how many? I said, 84. She said, she's going to prepare 84. So if we don't have, if we have cups left over, then we're just going to have to fill it up more next week. And it might be full next week because I'm out of town. <laughs> and the people can't 
can't wait to hear John's sermon, right? Or Pastor Carl's sermon in the evening. So I'm saying that uh, it would be wonderful to get that text from John. Said, Pastor, I've arrived. I got, I got more people to come to my service than came to yours, right? And so, uh, yeah, if that happens, then praise the Lord. Make sure you take up plenty of tithes and offerings. So. Uh, Psalm 84. Look at these verses. Psalm 84 in your Bible if you have a Bible. If not, I'm going to read it for you. So again, 80, Psalm 84, uh, verse 10. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. Think, think of this. For one day in God's area, God's courts, God's property, God's church, one day is better than a thousand anywhere else. Now, the rest of the world does not understand why we put going to church or going to worship God our priority. Because the rest of the world, it isn't their number one priority to go and worship the Lord. To go and learn more about the Lord. There are some people, you know, that there are some people who will think, what? They will think, hey, I know, I know all I need to know about God. I don't need to know anymore. Now that is very sad. Yes. Because no one can truly know everything that God is. Yes. God Himself, if He lives in your heart, is going to help draw you to them. Just like I would said, the grandkids want to go to the grandparents. Although they've been there a hundred times, they still want more. They want more time. And the grandparents want more time with the kids. God wants more of you. He wants more of you. He wants you to love Him as much as He loves you. Just like maybe your children. Don't you wish that your children knew how much you love them? Sometimes they don't know, do they? You can tell them you love them, but you can't make them understand how much you love them. And you want to do what's best for them. You want what's best for them. You want them to follow God's rules and God's path so that things won't go bad for them in their life. Yes. That's what you want. Yes. But you can't make them want to obey you. This is huge right here, people. Our God deserves honor and respect and love and more of you. Amen. He deserves that. I think it's a shame that we don't love Him more. We don't respect Him more. and We don't honor Him more. If He says that He wants you to truly know Him, then get to know Him more. Amen? Amen. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be, listen, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen. It's saying this, where's our, our ushers? Right? I would rather be an usher at the church than to be out there in the world with the rest of the people. Amen. And you're thinking, well, what kind of fun is that being an usher? Oh, these guys, they have a blast. They love it. <laughs> Just whenever you pull up, give them the keys to your car and say, drive it slow. No. <laughs> but the idea is, look, see, the writer here loves God. Amen. The writer here says, I would rather be a doorkeeper than being out there with the rest of the world on Sundays or Saturdays or, you know, with the... I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. A shield. That means that He is the light of your life. He is the one who will help you see to get by. He is also the one who will do what? Shield you and protect you from the tempter. And the tempter is very good, isn't he? He is very good at trying his best to keep you away from that relationship with God. Yes. A lot of people think, well, wait a second. I, I, I've got a good enough relationship to get into heaven. I don't need any more of him. That sounds like something the devil would say, yes. doesn't it? Oh, I need more of God because my God is my shield. He is, he's my son. He is the one who helps me to see. He helps 
me to get through. And he is my shield and my protector. The Lord will give grace and glory. Don't you love that verse? The Lord will give us grace. I need more grace. In fact, in fact, I came to the altar this morning and I prayed, Lord, forgive me of anything that I've done, anything that I've thought that was wrong, any impurities in my heart, any anything that I have done. I constantly like to do that. I like to go to the Lord and say, please, Lord, you know, make me a pure heart. Forgive me of the times that I've fallen short. And let me tell you one thing. God truly knows what you've done and where you're at in your relationship with Him. He knows that. Amen. You can't be a pretender. You can't fake out God. You can't lie to Him either. He knows if you're trying to justify sin, anybody? Was it? If you try to say, well, it's okay to tell this joke, or it's okay to say these things, or it's okay to, it was just a little bit, God already knows. He knows if that's right or wrong. And if He lives in your heart, He'll reveal it to you too, won't He? Yes. Right. He says, again, the Lord will give grace and He'll give something else. And He gives what? Glory. Glory. You mean to tell me that God will bring glory to even Jason or through Jason to God? Yeah. The answer is yeah. He will bring glory through you. If you glorify Jesus, you will be His glory. Amen. You see, God is going to listen to Jesus one day, and Jesus is going to stand before the Lord, and He's going to say, God, these are your joint heirs. These are my brothers and sisters in Christ. They will be able to receive all things. Amen. And glory will fall upon us. The Lord will give grace. The Lord will give glory. And listen to this. No good thing will He withhold from them who walk uprightly. That means that God will not allow you to go without. He will be there with you. He will help you. Verse 12, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in Thee. So if you trust in Jesus, you will be blessed. Yes. That's, I mean, that's, just, that's cut and dry, isn't it? Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I want to tell you about Psalm 51 so everybody can understand. You've heard the verse that says David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. It doesn't mean that David was... Uh, completely running after God all the time and never messing up. I think David messed up a lot. A whole lot. Let me tell you, you all know the story, right? David and Bathsheba. He looked at what? The lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and even his pride because he was the king. He could have anybody he wanted. All three of those things drew him into a bad relationship with a married woman. And we're thinking, oh no, the unforgivable, unpardonable sin. Not quite. Because God later on forgave him. But he looked, his sins was before not only enduring that relationship, but also he ended up killing or having put to death that woman's husband. And now I'm thinking about this. He's a lawbreaker, murderous, adulterer. David doesn't look all that pretty, does he, whenever you really think about it. You're thinking, but he was God's chosen one. Everybody in the house right now, yes. you are God's chosen ones too. God didn't want you to go through those sinful life styles that you had lived in times past. He didn't want that for you. And David actually wrote this psalm after Nathan pointed out his sins. And David really understood this, that he was going to have to pay for his sins while here on earth. 
God allowed David not to experience a death, but his child would die. Yes. So now David writes this psalm, and I want you to hear his heart. And this is exactly what it takes for you, everybody listening, the people online, the people on our YouTube channel, all that. This is exactly what it takes for you to get in a right relationship with the Lord. Do you want to have a right relationship with the Lord? Yes. Do you want everything to be good? Yes. This is what it takes. Look at what David does. Chapter 51, verse 1. David goes before the Lord and says, Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Amen. You know, one time somebody got after me and got really upset at me because this person came to the altar and he says, okay, I want to be saved and I want to be forgiven of my sins. And I said, why don't you beg God? And a couple of those ministers around me said, can you believe it? He said, beg. I don't think we need to beg God for anything. And I thought, wait just a minute. Are you so full of pride that you don't want to beg God? If you're that full of pride, I don't think God's going to show up. Amen. You have to get humble. And you have to realize that God Himself controls everything. He's the master of all miracles. Amen. And here he comes and begs God for forgiveness because guess what? He's guilty. He knows he's guilty and he's not trying to hide anything from God. Yes. That's what it takes to be in a right relationship with the Lord. Amen. Is when you totally understand where you've been and where you are and he says, please, according to thy tender mercy, Think of it. Again, he's like, I know you're merciful. I know you're loving. I know you're forgiving. Just blot out my transgressions. What he's saying is, please forgive. Forgive it and forget all of my sins. Amen. He says, verse 2, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. That means uh, wash me completely all throughout. Everything. Give me the full... Uh, uh, I like it. I like it. When you, when you go to the car wash, do you just want that thing where it just sprays? It never works, does it? It just sprays, and then you go out, and then you have just the dirt's just all in different places. I don't know. I don't want that. I want the thing with the little spinners. Right? Because I want that thing because it actually wipes the dirt off. I don't just want to spray. I don't want... That's, that's, that's fake. That's cosmetic. That's what most of the televangelists are offering. Just a little hose down. Just, just hose it off. It's still dirty. It needs to be thoroughly cleaned. It needs to be thoroughly. Somebody's got to get in there and just dump out all the trash. You can't just rearrange the trash and throw it in the trunk because guess what? All your trash is in the trunk. Guess what? Jesus has the key to your trunk. <laughs> he knows that all you did was rearrange all of your junk and put it in the trunk. Yes. And he knows that you did. No, don't. Do you see what I'm... We've got to have a thorough cleaning. Yeah. We want it to completely be done right. Just like the Bible constantly keeps saying, as like a swine goes back to the mud hole, right? As a dog returns to its own vomit. It's because, because they're so used to just living in the pigsty that they want to just live there and stay there because guess what? It's comfortable there, isn't it? It's really comfortable to be in that lifestyle that you're in. It's easy. You wake up and do nothing for God. Yes. That's easy. But to have somebody come in and completely transform you and cleanse you and make you righteous and to purify you that is a radical lifestyle change. Amen. It's a radical change. Going and being a faithful member of God's church. That is a complete radical life change, isn't it? Yes. It says, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Verse 3. So he's begging God. 
to do a complete makeover. Not the Oprah Winfrey makeovers, the real makeovers. Amen. He said, verse 3, for I acknowledge my what? I'm admitting that I've sinned. I'm admitting that I messed up. I'm admitting that I didn't take you serious. Think of it. What's it going to take for us to take God serious? What's it going to take for us to take God seriously? What is it going to take? Think about it. Don't you pray that for like your friends or your neighbors or your... And like, you know what? If they would just take God seriously, yes. it would change the world. If people who go to church would take God seriously, it would change the world. Yes. That's what we say here. We want everybody to take God seriously. Yes. And if you don't want to take God seriously... You can go find another church because he's ser we take him seriously here. Amen. We look at the Bible and say, this is our God, not a fake God. Don't you tell me and spread junk about me behind my back and think it's okay. It's not okay. Your foul mouth and your rudeness, it is not okay. It should be gone. If Jesus is living in your heart, you should act like He's living in your heart. Amen? Amen. Right. So He's confessing before God. Now look at verse 4. Verse 4 and verse 5 of Psalm 51 is some of the greatest material you'll ever read in your life. Verse 4. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and I've done this evil in thy sight. Meaning this. He knows God knows. Amen. He knows God knows His heart. He knows that God controls forgiveness and unforgiveness. So he says, I've done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. He's got, you know what he's saying? He's like, I deserve punishment. I totally deserve punishment. You know I'm guilty. Everybody else knows I'm guilty. Amen. We all know I'm guilty. Now what do I do? That means we're guilty of sin. We're guilty of not taking the serious as we should. Don't you want? Don't don't you think he deserves our honor? Yes. Yes. How you live your life that, that, that is a sign of who you're honoring. Yes. Like one of these days, this 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 young lady who runs up and down here, you see her every Sunday. I see her just about every day. She runs up and down here every day. And during church, she'll run up and down. And I'll, we'll watch here. I'll tell you when she runs by. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get on my jogging pants. <laughs> Can you come to church? I mean, hey, listen. That's, hey, you keep praying for me that I can keep up with you. <laughs> I might have to ride a moped. <laughs> is she more concerned about whatever it is, her health? Is she more concerned about, you know, trying to stay in shape? I don't know. But I'll tell you this, I would love for her to put that effort into making sure that her and her family gets in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I think our God would do the same thing. Amen. He would really, truly do what? What's his? He would shed blessings. He would share, give her blessings just for coming to church. Yeah. Is she that selfish? I don't know. But if you see her, invite her to church. So you make the sermon. Look at verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And sin did my mother conceive me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly where every one of us are. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. That means that we were born into the sinful world. Every one of us was born into the sinful world. And this sinful world molds us into selfish people. Doesn't it? <clears throat> this world makes us selfish. Yes. We are so selfish that we will put our own, our, our, the things that we want to do ahead of God. Yes. All the time. You're thinking, I don't know, Pastor, that's pretty rude and bold. I mean, if you want people to keep, you know, listening to the Word of God, you can't really get in there and tell them that. 
No, we're all selfish by nature because we're born into a sinful, selfish world. Amen. We've got to fight against that. Jesus fought against that. You want me to tell you what? We all say this, well, I have Jesus living in me. And Jesus gives me strength to overcome the world. Does He give you strength to overcome your selfishness? Does He? Does He have strength to overcome your selfishness? Oh, He does. Don't you give God excuses. He knows better. We're supposed to be Christians. We're supposed to be Christ-like. Do you think, and we just talked about it in 1 John, Jesus was in heaven. He was in perfection. He was there. He had everything, whatever He wanted to do. If He wanted to create something, He could. If He wanted an ice cream, He could make an ice cream. He could do whatever He wants to do. And you know what He decided to do though? He decided that even though he was in perfection, that he would come down here into a sinful world. Yes. And you're thinking, well, wait a second. If I'm in heaven, forget everybody else. <laughs> He's up there. He has anything he wants. Yes. And he decided to be created into a sinful world, be a human, let those people double-cross him, two-time him, stab him in the back, and literally stab him in the side, and nail him on a cross, and try their best to kill him. They didn't kill him. He laid his life down. Amen. But they despised him. They rejected him. They treated him like a dog. And he did all that so that you and God would honor him. Honor Him. Do we honor Him? Yes. I mean to tell you, that you might as well get it ready, Mary. I used to sit in a church, a whole bunch of churches, and they would always sing, I surrender all. Yeah, I did. I surrender all. And everybody sung it. It was so beautiful. You could hear the altos. You could hear the, and the altos make a choir, by the way. If you're an alto, you make the choir. I mean, sopranos, they're great and all. They sound real pretty, but the altos, man, they keep it. Oh, I mean, especially in those Baptist churches. <laughs> this ain't too far from it now, don't you? <laughs> Think of this. And we would sing, I surrender all. And as I was singing that song, and it sounded so pretty, and I looked at the words, and I was like, man, you know what? I don't know if this is completely accurate, if I should really be singing this song, because I'm even lying in the house of God. I'm singing that song, and I'm lying through my teeth. How can I, how can I do that before God in His house? And I'm lying, I surrender all. I didn't really want to surrender all. Amen. I was sitting there, I was sitting, oh, I don't want to surrender all. I mean, you imagine what it would be like if we really surrendered all? How does it go? I surrender all, all to Jesus. Jesus. All to Jesus, I surrender. I surrender all. You see... Ladies and gentlemen, everybody, if your neighbor's asleep, wake them up. Here's the deal. If every one of you people here, every one of you people would surrender all, we would have a revival like nobody's business. Amen. Everybody. Now think about it. I can just imagine right now, I mean, Jess is driving all the way from the woods. <laughs> You're driving all the way from the woods, woods. Leesburg, that's woods. <laughs> Edgewater. Edgewater. The, the, the New Smyrna. We're driving from all over to come here. And this is what, this is what God wants. As, as the pastor of any church, uh, this would be amazing to me. After church, you people get me. Don't touch me and hug me like Pastor Carl. Just get, get right up to me and say, Pastor, 
I want more of God. Can I please come on Tuesdays and pray? Can I please come on Thursdays and just have a Bible reading? Can I please come more and have more Bible study? Can I get more of God? Can we have another church service throughout the week? I want more, 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 more. I surrender it all and all I want to do with my life is get more of God. And I want to be a better servant to God. I truly want to surrender all to God. I want to let Him know by my actions that I honor Him. Amen. What kind of honor is that if you have a, a spouse or someone else and you don't want to spend time with them? Well, chances are they're probably not good spouses anyway if they're not serving God. So I don't blame you. But, but the idea is this. If they're serving the Lord and you're supposed to be serving the Lord together, you want to spend more time. You want to let them know how much you love them. Does God know how much you love them? Yes. Or, are you, or, or have we just been saying it by our mouth and not by our actions? <coughs> James says this, you can talk all about your faith that you want, but I'll show you my faith by my actions. Hey, I can't get enough of it. Jump... David here says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. Again, this world molds us into selfish, self-centered, self-seeking, prideful, arrogant, rude, obnoxious people. Sorry. That's what this world is popping out. Amen. Verse 6, Behold, thou desirest truth in my inward parts. God wants to know that you are truthful with Him in your heart. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Listen, the Spirit will give you direction. It will give you discernment. It will allow you to know how your relationship with God is, Amen. if you'll let Him. Right. Verse 7, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be now how can anybody do that? Purify you and cleanse you from sin. Nobody can but Jesus. Amen. And if He's done that for you, you're going to want to live for Him. Amen. He died for you so you can live for Him, not so you can live for yourself. Right. How about that? That's the truth. You're not living here so that you can live your best life now. You're living here so that you can do God's work, so that He can give you the best life for eternity. Amen. <clears throat> Don't tell me all about, well, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do that. No, you've got to do what God wants you to do, and that's bring glory and honor to Jesus. Amen. Amen. If I'm wrong... <clears throat> I don't want to be right. <laughs> I'm right. And if you don't like it, you go on down somewhere else. And you tell them, and you, you badmouth me, and tell that church all about what I'm saying. Maybe we'll get a few true worshipers to, to come here. <laughs> Purge me with hyssop and wash me clean, and wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness. Don't you want joy and gladness in your life? You won't find it from anything else. They don't make a joy and gladness pill. They, although they are some pills that will make you feel like that you're in Fruit Loop Bill. But I'm telling you right now, the Fruit Loop Bill isn't going to do any good. It's the joy that comes from Jesus is what you're looking for. Right. Every time. There are people sometimes in their life is miserable. They hate their life. But, and they're trying to look for things and they're trying to say, what is going to make me happier? Is it going to be drinking? Is it going to be dope? Is it going to be this drug or that drug? What's going to kill my pain? What's going to make me happy? Have you ever thought for one second that maybe that is Holy Spirit conviction falling upon your life, making you feel like you have a miserable life because you don't have Jesus in your life. You haven't fully surrendered your life. You're not giving Him your all. If you give Him your all, what's it say? The Bible says He'll give you joy. Amen. Amen. Give it more to Jesus. Don't give it less. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. He's saying that yeah, my insides are broken. My insides aren't fixed right. Help me fix those right. God, you can do it. You can help me. And again, he's wanting more of God, isn't he? And verse 9 it says this, 
Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Deja vu. That's what he said before, wasn't it? Please, Lord, don't look at me as a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Blot out all of my sins. Make me new. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart. I want a clean heart. I want it to be the, I want the inside to be perfect the way you want it to be. Our God, think of we always said, you ask me how I know. I'm going to stop singing. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. He lives within my heart. Well, let me tell you one thing, people. God don't like to live in dog houses with, that are dirty. You understand? If He lives in your heart and your heart is not clean and it's not taken care of, it's a disaster. Amen. And it's a disaster waiting to happen. It's because if Jesus lives in there, it's going to be tidy and clean and washed and pure. Amen. If your heart isn't there, it needs to be. That means that you've decided to elbow the janitorial service out of the way and you take care of it yourself. Some of you aren't very good at cleaning the house. I didn't say all of you, I said some of you. And the truth is, is that some people aren't very good at cleaning their own hearts. You've got to let the master cleaner come in and purify and cleanse your heart. And if it's done, and if it's done right, then you are going to have a pure heart and everything that you pursue is going to bring glory and honor to Jesus. Amen. Isn't that what we need to do? Yes. He says this, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Renew. You hear that word? Renew. 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 Make it new. Make it new. Make it better. Make it better. Does anybody here think they're good enough right now? Maybe you're good enough to make it into heaven, but do you think that you can give God more? If you don't think you can give God more, you're lying to yourself. Amen. You're lying to yourself. Right. Create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me, cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Yes. Tell me the truth before we... Tell me the truth. I want to see hands too. Was there a day in your life when you were so excited about Jesus that you just couldn't get enough? Is it, was there a day like that? I mean, was there a day like that? Praise God. Do you want those days to come back? Yes. yes. Do you want those days to come back? God wants you to have those days. Amen. But you're getting in front of God's will. You see, God's given you 100% every single day. He never gives a half percent, uh, half, half measures. He doesn't give half measures. He gives you His best every time. And if you don't experience the joy of your salvation, it's your own fault. Amen. You need to do what David did here. He was busted. He was caught not giving honor to God and giving his all. And he repented and said, I want to make it right. I want to be the best I can be. That's right. It used to be the military. They don't even do it anymore. They don't even want people, I don't think. They used to say, be all that you can be. Right? Yeah. Be all that you can be. Not many people say, hey, uh, hoorah. Right? I don't know. <laughs> be all that you can be. God's looking back and saying, you guys already, you haven't even touched how much grace and providence that I've placed before you. You haven't even touched what you're uh, capable of doing yet. That means there's still so much more we can do. It says, it says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. That means that Jesus is not only willing to help you, He wants to help you, and there is no handcuffs in Jesus' will. He can give you 100% everything that you ever possibly need. And this is it right here. This is the close before we do our time of invitation and communion. Here it is. Listen, verse 13. The, he says, if you'll do that for me, what's he say in verse 13? Then I will teach transgressors thy ways. Do you hear that? That means this. That means this. If you 
forgive me and help me and I give you my all, you bring to me that joy, I will teach other people about you. Listen, there are so many people out there, I know this, you know this, who think this. I don't need those church people. I don't need them. I can do church on my own. Right? I can do church on my own. I can be a church of myself. It's just that there might not be other people around, but I'm just I'm in it to win it for me. Could you just imagine that? The disciples, Jesus leaving and saying, you know what, guys? Yeah, I've told you all everything there is to know about heaven. And you know what? You could just be selfish and keep it all to yourself. So only five people get to heaven. How about 12? Just 11 people make it to heaven because we're all one here. Just 11 people. Shh, don't tell anybody. You think that's what he wants? Of course not. You're supposed to go to church and encourage people. You're supposed to go and encourage people to hear the truth. You're supposed to encourage people, help people, help the church grow. That's what we're supposed to do. He says that once you completely blot out my sins, you come into my heart, you give me a pure heart, I'm going to teach other people all about you. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. That means that people will get saved. You're going to tell people about Jesus. You're going to ask them to come and hear the word of God. Is that not exciting? That's how the church is supposed to work. If we will get serious about Jesus, He's already serious about us. And you keep looking at the news. I keep looking at the news and it's just a mess. Bunch of dirty, lying, cheating, no good for nothing. I feel like you was Timothy Sam. I don't even know what he was saying half the time. You trying to do it for us? That's the Tasmanian devil. I know what he was saying. <laughs> I look at this place and it's awful. There's got to be somebody out there who's willing to stand up for the truth Amen. and give honor to Jesus. And I say right now before I thump my Bible that you people had better say this. Listen, listen. Who shall God send to be His people? It should be us. Amen? Amen? And if it's you, if you're willing to be the one that Jesus wants to help trans, trans, change the world, then you should say amen. amen. Look at this. I like this because my words, they don't come out as good as the ones on TV. Those guys on TV, man, they are so good. They're so rehearsed. I know one guy who rehearses it really well. But let me tell you, this morning before I came, I decided just for once, I'm going to just turn it on this one show is religious channel. And you know what they spent the whole morning doing? Selling vitamins. <laughs> they had the Bible there on the table. And they were like, you people really need this. It will help you. And it says, it will help your face have its elasticity back. Don't you women, aren't you just, don't you just want to grow, grow old gracefully? Well, if you take these pills, it will just take those wrinkles right away. And I thought, this is a religious program, and they're trying to sell these. And they're like, if you buy two now, since this is a religious program, we'll give you one bottle for free. Let me tell you, let me tell you, there are no gimmicks. It's either you surrender all to Jesus, or you ride the fence like the church at Laodicea. You're lukewarm. There's no in-betweens. You're either on God's side or you're on the devil's side. And the devil's side is the selfish side. 